my name is Steve Rennie. I am the Wren Baron. Welcome to my Wren Baron Learning to Fly YouTube channel. A few days back, I posted a video of a flight from Henderson, Nevada to Santa Monica, California, and it was called IFR Check Ride in a Cirrus SR22 Gen 6. Today's video is part two of that flight. Now, if you've not watched that video yet, I'd suggest you start there. It'll make this one make a lot more sense. But if you did miss that one, I'll give you a little brief overview. During that flight, we experienced all kinds of IMC conditions from rain to turbulence to clouds, icing, you name it. Normally, I do these videos with four cameras. Today, we're going to just use two. There is no ATC audio. I'll be doing all the play by play. If you're a pilot contemplating getting your IFR rating, or if you are a fan of Cirrus aircraft, I think you're going to find today's video helpful. Part one of the video covered everything from our departure at Henderson Field in, in Nevada up to the transition to the Kim 03 arrival. On today's video, we'll pick up the flight there and fly that instrument approach all the way down to minimums at Santa Monica Airport. Pull down your foggles, get in the plane, and let's go flying. And with the rain pounding on our windshield, we make the left turn into the Kim 03 arrival, and now we're heading for home. And now that we're heading for home, let's stop the video for a second, take a scan of the instruments and see what it's telling us. The active leg is Kimo to darts. The autopilot scoreboard is telling us that we're in navigation mode, aka GPS. We've got yaw damper engaged and we're in altitude hold at 8,000. Our indicated airspeed is 140 knots. Our altitude is 8,000 feet. We're flying a 186 degree heading as we turn left into the course, which is 142, detailed at the top of the MFD and in the flight plan section. Our power is set to 66%. We're about 26 miles in 12 minutes from landing. We've loaded the RNAV 2-1 approach at Santa Monica. We're talking to Burbank approach on COM1, and we've preloaded our frequencies for Santa Monica on COM2. Outside the cockpit, we've got a 21-knot wind blowing from the right. Our outside air temperature is rising, and as you can see right here, it's raining. At this point in the flight, we're 16 and a half miles from our initial approach fix, which is darts. The published altitude at darts is 4,200, so we're going to need to lose 3,800 feet before we get there. And to make matters even trickier, once we get to darts, we're going to have to make a sharp right turn and drop 1,200 feet to reach our final approach fix, where hopefully we can pick up the glide path. Okay, I want to stop the video one more time and talk about one of the most important lessons I've learned about IFR flying, and that is managing your speed. Now, if you look at the top of the PFD, you'll see that we're 15 and a half miles from darts. We're showing 141 knots indicated airspeed, but more importantly, we're showing 161 knots over the ground. At that pace, we're going to reach darts in 5 minutes and 47 seconds. And when we get there, we want to be at 4,200 feet, so we'll need to calculate our rate of descent. And you could do that in your head by taking that 3,800 feet and dividing it by 6 minutes, or you could look over on the MFD and the VNAV profile where it's calculated for you. Another great feature of the Perspective Plus system. No matter how you calculate it, that all assumes that you could start down right now, but that's not what's happening. At this point, ATC has not given us the permission to go lower, so there's only one solution, and that is to go slower. So you'll see right here I start to reduce power to give myself a bit more time. Now you'll also notice that I'm setting the altitude pre-select to 7,000, and here's why. Okay, let's take a look at that Kim 03 arrival. The first thing you'll notice is that the plate said to expect 8,000 at Bogut, and that's exactly what we got. But between Bogut and Kimo, and Kimo and Darts, you'll also notice that the minimum altitude is 7,000 feet. So even though ATC has only assigned me 8,000 so far, I go ahead and load 7,000 just to stay ahead of the plane. If ATC gives me lower, then I'll just adjust it then. One final thing, you'll also notice that I've circled the Burbank Airport. The reason is because even though the minimum altitude on this leg is 7,000, I know from experience that ATC is going to give me lower because they need to get me low enough to reach darts at 4,200. But because planes are taking off and landing at Burbank Airport, I won't get much lower than five or 6,000 as long as I'm in their airspace, which extends from the ground up to 4,500 feet. Let's talk about checklists for a minute. Another great feature of the Garmin Perspective Plus system is the digital checklist. Having those digital checklists on the MFD not only keeps your head up, it keeps the cockpit cleaner and more organized as well. Now I can just hear somebody out there saying, that's great, but what if the MFD fails? That's easy, I've got the backup checklist on my iPhone, 
and the pilot checklist that comes with the plane. Now, if you look in the top right corner of the PFD where the comms are, you'll see that we're receiving a transmission from ATC and we're finally getting approval to lower our altitude to 6,000 feet. So I dial in 6,000 feet on the altitude select and I set vertical speed for 700 feet per minute because I want to get down fast as we approach darts. And once the plane starts heading downhill, I'm going to pull back a little power as well to make sure that we can maintain a good speed as we head into darts. And once again, the Garmin Perspective Plus system gives you a great tool to help you manage that descent. And it's called the Blue Banana. And here's how it works. Once you've selected a descent rate and look over on the MFD, you'll see this little blue banana moves up and down as you change your vertical speed and your actual indicated airspeed. And it gives you a great estimation of where you're going to actually reach that descent that you're looking for. So you can see here, based on our current speed and descent rate, we're going to get to 6,000 feet about halfway between our current position and darts, which is good. And here's why. If you look over on the MFD, you'll see the blue banana is indicating that we'll reach our 6,000 altitude right about a beam Burbank Airport. Looking ahead a couple steps, our final approach fix is movie, and our altitude there needs to be 3,000 feet. So that's going to require that we drop 3,000 feet pretty fast, so the more time we have, the better. So I add another 100 feet of vertical descent, and sure enough, the blue banana moves a little bit further away from darts. At this point, there's not much left to do except to watch our instruments and manage our speed as we descend for 6,000. So while we've got a moment here, I want to tell you why I decided to get my IFR rating. My home airport, Santa Monica Airport, is right next to the ocean. In fact, some of my favorite places in all of California, San Diego, Santa Barbara, Santa Cruz, and Monterey are all next to the ocean. And too often, that means you're going to have a marine layer sitting over your airport at 1,000 feet in the early morning and then again in the afternoon. So unless you have an IFR rating, that means you're going to be sitting on the ground in the morning or looking for another airport in the afternoon, and that just didn't work for me. I'm pretty sure that anybody that ever thought about buying a plane had an idea in mind of what they wanted to do when they got it. For me, that meant flying to my favorite golf course, and if having an IFR rating is what it was going to take, I was in. So two years ago, I started my IFR training, and six months later, I had my IFR certificate. And over the last year and a half, I've flown hundreds of instrument approaches, all to get me ready for a day just like today. As we reach 6,000 feet, we're now five miles from darts, and our speed is right at the Cirrus recommended approach speed of 120 knots. As the plane levels out, I'll add a little bit of power to maintain that speed. Now I'm just waiting for ATC to get me lower before darts and turn me into the final approach course. And I know from my past experience that the likelihood of that happening sooner rather than later is nil, so I'm prepared now for a hard right turn, dropping like a brick into that final approach. As we get closer and closer to darts, it becomes obvious that I'm not going to have to worry about 4,200 feet, so I decide to set the altitude selected 3,000 and put in my first notch of flaps. Just when I think ATC has forgotten about me, they finally come back and ask me to turn right to 180 degrees and join the final approach course. So I set the heading bug for 180 degrees, but because it's taken so long for ATC to come back to me, instead of hitting the heading button, I decide just to let GPS slide me into the course. 
and ATC is still not giving me the permission to go lower. And finally, ATC clears me for the approach. So I hit the approach button on the autopilot controller to arm the glide path. I set vertical speed for an 1100 foot per minute descent. And I pull the power back to 15%. And once I've done all that, you guess it, I start looking to see if that blue banana is going to get me in front of movie. And now all that work and preparation is paid off. We're on course, we're on a proper glide path to reach movie at 3,000 feet, and we're at the recommended approach speed of 100 knots. I think that's what they call a stabilized approach. And now all I need to do is monitor my instruments and make adjustments where necessary to keep it that way. Now, as we head on down, you recall that the last reported weather was overcast at 2,900, broken at 1,200, and broken at 800 feet. Uh, up until now, my personal minimums were about 500 over minimum, so that's going to be pushing the limit today. And now that I'm established on the approach, ATC hands me off to Santa Monica Tower. Once I contact Santa Monica Tower, they clear me to land on runway 21. If we descend to movie, you'll notice my speed is getting a little slow. Because we had to make such a steep approach to movie, I had to pull the power way back. So you'll see me gently increasing that power back up to about 28 to 30 percent as we approach the runway. Along the way, I'm going to keep an eye on the winds and our ground speed as well and make adjustments where necessary to keep us in that 90 to 100 knot range. I'll let you take a quick peek outside and you'll see that we are definitely back in the clouds, not at 2,900 feet, but 3,800 feet. That's why they call it weather forecast. Now, if you look right in the middle of the PFD, you'll see that green circle is right smack in the middle of those pink pathways, which tells me that we're right on track and we're likely to pick up that glide path a little bit before 3,000 feet. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. The green GP starts flashing up in the scoreboard and the magenta diamond appears in the glide path indicator. And if you look at the vertical speed indicator, you'll notice that our descent is starting to flatten out as we transition from 1,100 feet per minute to about 500 to 550 feet per minute descent. And finally, as that nose comes up, our speed starts to decrease, so we're going to need to add a little power to make sure that we don't get too slow. And now we'll just let the autopilot do its thing and follow the glide path down to the minimums. Now that doesn't mean I can go to sleep. I'm still taking note of our power settings, our indicated airspeed, our ground speed, uh, and our headwinds. And all the while I'm keeping an eye on that MFD map as well to make sure I'm tracking that pink line. And if necessary, I'll adjust the detail view to see more or less of the information that I'm interested in. Here I'm changing it to show the local freeways, which is important because I can't see what's below me right now, and those are great navigation aids for me.
scanning again. We're 1.9 miles from MIPTI. We're on the glide path, we're on the course, we're on our speed, and we're tracking the pink line. Now at this point in the flight, it's becoming obvious that a missed approach could actually be part of the program today. And so while so many times when I'm flying an approach into Santa Monica in the sun, I forget to change over to the missed approach altitude. Today I remember because it looks real. And here I am again, starting another scan. On course, on the glide path, on the speed, and on the pink line. And of course, just to make things a bit more interesting still, I see we're now starting to get a pretty good rain happening as we approach the runway. Now, if all that is starting to get you nervous and you can't actually remember where you're going and what runway you're landing on, the Garmin Perspective System is there to help you out. You'll note in that left-hand side of the PFD that you got an enunciation telling you where you're going and what runway you're looking at. Good stuff. But the truth is, as I approached 1,000 feet to minimums, instead of feeling nervous, I was feeling confident. Confident in my airplane and all its capabilities. Confident that I know how to fly my airplane. And confident that all that IFR training and all that IFR practice had prepared me for a day just like today. And now it's showtime. Let's see how we do. We're now about 2.7 miles from the missed approach point, and we're starting to see a little hint of ground below us. But it doesn't last very long before we lose sight of the ground again. At 600 feet to minimums, it looks like we're going to break out. At 500 feet to minimums, we're back in the clouds again and no field in sight. Four hundred feet to minimum, ground contact, but no runway in sight. Three hundred feet to minimums, no runway in sight. Two hundred feet to minimums, ground contact, but no runway in sight. And now as I'm approaching the runway and I know I've got the runway made, I'm going to slowly but surely start pulling out power until I run out of air and land softly, I hope. Ah, home sweet home. That was a good one today. I hope you enjoyed and that you learned something along the way. My name is Steve Rennie. I am the Wren Baron. It's been a pleasure flying with you. I look forward to doing it again soon. No.